James Bond 007 is back in No Time to Die, the long-awaited final Daniel Craig movie, uh, and it's it's really it's really kind of bombing. It's really kind of bombing. Uh, supposedly, it hasn't made a progress, a profit at the box office, and most of the reviews are most of the reviews are loathsome. I mean, you know, people are really hating on this latest James Bond entry, but a lot of people say it was a good way for uh, Daniel Craig to go out, and it was probably the reason. I decided to make this one more movie after reporting for like what a few months that he was all done making James Bond movies. It kind of reminds me of uh, about 40 years ago when James Bond you know, was uh, in For Your Eyes Only and I read that Roger Moore was considering not making any more James Bond movies after that but of course he made as you know a couple of more so this movie is considered just a really bad James Bond movie. It's about the longest James Bond movie ever, and it could have been shorter. The midsection is, like a lot of people say, whether they like it or not, a bit tedious. The plot is a little too convoluted. So, uh, of course, uh, let's just say, shortly when the pan you know when the pandemic hit. Uh, the East Coast on Saturday Night Live, they did a weekend update item where they said that uh, No Time to Die was going to be postponed for health reasons. And, you know, of course, the, the you know, burgeoning COVID pandemic when you know, it had reached uh, U.S. shores. And they said something like they could just go ahead and re release it and shorten the title to Time to Die. And a lot of people are like, oh, that isn't funny, but it was relatable, so I liked it. So for my own reasons, uh, those of you who've seen the movie might have an idea why. Because how it, how it ended, I used that nick that name, you know, for my reasons, in, in which involve, of course, the ending. Well, if you sit through the whole credits, you'll see what all or most James Bond movies say at the end of the uh, credits, all the way at the end. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, I think that, uh, of course, this movie is well done. It's got a lot of killer stunts and stuff, just like any James Bond movie. Uh, this movie is really serious. Uh, license, a lot of them were pretty serious, and License to Kill was real serious and grim. And... Uh, You know, and this movie, you know, and of course, by comparison, that movie was even light on its feet. So I would say, I would say that, uh, oops, overall, overall, at least for a spy movie, it isn't bad. But it, yes, it could have been like a half hour shorter. I don't even think everybody understands the plot. But of course, we have Rami Malek, who uh, is kind of shortchanged, not really given much to do, just a quiet weirdo. Just some shadowy, soft-spoken, just really evil guy that wanted to punch him in the face because of his uh, plan to mess up James Bond's life. And um, Blofeld has a small part, and you know, thanks to a plot device that's important to the movie, he's in there. He's in there shortly, and his part ends like too easily. But it's integral, integral to the story. We find out. Uh, we find out about Q's, sex, Q's sexual preference. <sighs> so uh, basically, though, I thought I thought it was entertaining, but you got to be ready for something real serious and overlong, and not completely in the spirit of Bond, but a not bad spy movie. I've seen more spy movies. Of course, I've seen better Bond movies. Um, you know, in many ways, a lot of things are missing that James Bond has been long since associated with. 
But of course, yeah, if you've seen the previews, yeah, the old Aston Martin from, I think, starting in Skyfall, which of course harkens back to Goldfinger, is back with the machine guns and all that, the gadget car. And that was one thing that's in the spirit of Bond, but all I can say is just see it with an open mind. I can't recommend for sure that you see it with without an open mind, and we know James Bond movies are all basically the same, and they've been around for like 60 years. So uh, this one is in some ways consistent and in some ways that have that have uh, disappointed a lot of audience members and critics it's not completely consistent but we still have you know a threat to the world and all that sort of thing you know it seems like you know especially the villains are kind of short changed you know because they're played by good actors so basically, I just say go see it with an open mind. I would say it's a decent Bond movie. I wanted to like it more. And the stakes are pretty high, so I can't complain about that. So this is George uh, just saying it's a pretty good spy movie. Uh, it's just not as Bond as we're used to, you know, for the most part. So uh, that's my review, and uh, I'll see you with the movie. So save me the aisle seat. Ciao.